On this episode of Home and Design, we're sharing a recent visit to Discovery Place Science Museum in Charlotte, North Carolina, to take in their visiting Apollo exhibition. The museum had us bring some of our Apollo projects to share with their attendees as we joined in the celebration of a time when we went to the moon. Traveling installation, currently at Discovery Place, is a co-production of the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and Flying Fish Exhibits, and they've added context for Apollo. So new generations have a window into subjects like the Cold War's nuclear arms race, the struggle for civil rights, the Vietnam War, and the advent of new technology in broadcasting, all of which are inextricably intertwined with the space race. We're not going to spoil the exhibit in this video, but I did want to share some of my favorite items and impressions from this delightful installation. Right off the bat, I thought I spotted Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut at Discovery Place, but Tim is actually much taller than Yuri Gagarin and the other cosmonauts who flew in suits like the SK-1 we see here. SK standing for Skafander Kosmicheski, which means diving suit for space. At the NASA end of the spectrum, in 21 different materials and 24 layers, the 200-pound A7L suit allowed astronauts to do extravehicular activity in the inhospitable extremes of the moon's surface for up to six hours. The story of how Playtex, a company known for making bras, and ran the military-industrial complex in addressing the humanity of human spaceflight is fascinating. It's a privilege every time I see one of these suits. To signify the near disaster of Apollo 13, the exhibition includes a cubic lithium hydroxide canister from the command module that had to be modified to fit a cylindrical receptacle when the lunar module unexpectedly became the crew's life raft. NASA was literally solving the square peg in a round hole dilemma, with the stakes being life and death, and doing it using only the resources on board, including things like tape and a plastic bag, and ironically, the cover of the arguably defunct mission instruction manual. In our LEGO Moonlanders video, you can hear portions of the audio of Armstrong and Aldrin coming in for their landing. Looking at several models of the LEM at the exhibit, I was reminded of the dwindling fuel and the boulders in the landing area that kept Armstrong looking for a better place to set down. And let me just say, those were some cool customers up there that day. There's a one-to-one -one set of landing gear at the exhibit, the foot pad and sensing probe uh, included that... I walked up to and involuntarily said out loud, contact me. Right. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Out of descent. Hold control, both auto descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. As a designer, which makes me something of a de facto futurist, I love concept models and prototypes. I grew up in the era of concept cars by Gijaro and Bertoni, after all, and the artwork of Sid Mead. I'm increasingly enamored, though, with vintage concepts like this one for a winged Mars lander by Werner von Braun, conceived at a time we didn't even understand how thin the Martian atmosphere really is. One of the items we brought for the weekend was the Saturn V flying model rocket that we built for the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. But ours was not the only flying model rocket in attendance. As part of a 40th anniversary celebration of Apollo, Steve Eaves of Ohio built and flew this huge 1 10th scale model rocket back in 2009. While our visiting 170th scale rocket from Apogee Components is impressive at five feet, this 33-foot behemoth in the exhibit is bigger than many aerospace sounding rockets and flew to almost a mile high. 
I saw the nine engine mounts on the bottom, and I'd love to see the bolt-on motor retainers used to rig this model for flight. I tell you what, we'll put a couple links to Steve's flight in the description so you can go and check that out. There was one exhibit that just stopped me in my tracks, and that was one of life casts of the hands of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. These were made as precision references for the suit manufacturer, so each of the astronauts' bespoke gloves could be custom tailored. Now, such intimate artifacts really stand out in a predominantly technical collection. Of interest was Michael Collins' wedding ring, and it's suggested on the exhibit that he had to wear the ring during the mission because it was worn during this casting. As I mentioned, we brought our five-foot Saturn V flying model rocket to the museum for the weekend, along with the 3D-printed gantry tower we built to match and our Apollo-themed launch controller. People were able to get up close and personal with those items, as well as see some of the artifacts of our design and engineering process. So if you're not a subscriber here at Home and Design, you'll want to do that to see the making videos we have coming up on that gantry and controller, as well as the other space-related content we have in the works. Be sure to check out the Apollo playlist we have underway at the channel now, and stay tuned as we add to it. We had a great time over the weekend interacting with everyone who engaged with our Apollo projects, introducing people to the 3D printing process, finding other model rocketry fans, and meeting entire families focused on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math was so cool that we'll be back here doing it again on November 20th and 21st. So come see us. With that, I wanna say thank you to the Discovery Place Science Museum for having us. This exhibit, Apollo When We Went to the Moon, will be here in Charlotte through January 2nd, so don't miss that. We'll link to it in the description, along with the links I mentioned to Steve Eve's high-powered rocketry flight. If you can't make it to Charlotte in the time remaining, the show's headed next to Dearborn, Michigan in early 2022, and will continue touring for the next few years with stops to include New York City and our old stomping grounds, Richmond, Virginia. Thanks for joining us for another glimpse into how designers work and play here on Home and Design.